Hi everyone, Jeanette here with the Bebo Vintage Designs. Today I wanted to show you how it is that I did this painting. And this is actually take two because I started it earlier and I got this far before I realized that I ran out of storage on my phone and it was no longer recording. So here we go again. And before I start this video, I wanted to let you know that I get asked very often about the products that I use to create my art. So I finally figured out how to add the links to uh, the description below so that you can see everything that I used and purchase it if you'd like to. So if you have any questions about the products that I'm using, again, go into the descriptions and everything will be listed there with a link. And um, here we go. All right, so the first thing I did was I used this stamper. I'm not sure if that's the correct name. That's what I call it. It's by Tim Holtz. And I apply whatever inks I like. Uh, for this particular painting, I used uh, caramel and lettuce. And then I use my mini mister, which is somewhere. Here it is. And I just spray it to reactivate the ink that's already on it. And I'm just going to stamp. Maybe I should spray it a little bit more. Hold on. It just reactivates the ink that's already on it. And what I'm doing is adding a little background. And I want it to be light. So I'm not going to add any more ink to this. Most of it will be covered with the petals anyway, so I'm not too concerned with any patterns or anything like that. And you can see that I'm not putting, I'm not stamping in the corners where I'll be putting the uh, petals. They're starting my flower. Let me spray a little bit more. Okay, then I'm going to take my mister and I spray from a distance. And I'll let that dry for a little bit. And I'll dry it. I'm going to spray it again. Maybe even stamp a little bit more. You don't have to do this, you can just stamp it. I just like the way it looks. Alright, so the colors that I'm using for my flowers are crimson and teak wood. So I'm going to put down a little brown here and over here. Then I want to dry that before it starts to get away from me. Then I'm going to put down a little crimson. All right, 
So now the PSI on my uh, compressor is set at 40. And what I'm going to do is lay down a small drop of alcohol on the ink. And I'm going to hold the airbrush close to the paper and then push the ink out. And the reason I hold it close is because it makes the ink go this way and it gives you those little legs, which is what I want. Just a small drop of alcohol is all that you need. And I have the, uh, P I, it's good to have the PSI higher because that's what gives you the, the greater flow of air and sprays the petals out like this. If I were pushing, um, holding the gun further away, that wouldn't happen. And just keep blowing petals until you until you're happy with what you have. And that looks pretty good to me, so now I'm going to turn it around. And do the same on the other side. And I'm pretty happy with that. So that's how I create the flower. And now for the center, I'm going to use snow cap. I put a drop in my palette. You can either let it sit for a little while, or you can use your blow dryer to dry it a little bit. I like it a little tackier 
and not so liquidy because I think it, um, it just like the effect better. It doesn't balloon out so much. So right now I'm drying it. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to use a micro brush. Dip it in, tap most of it off, and then start dotting for the center. And right now all I'm doing is laying down the foundation of my center. So the snow cap will absorb the color that's beneath it. So that's why I call it my foundation. it around into the other side. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is dry this. And this is not a step that you have to do, it's just what I like to do because now when I lay down my next layer of white, I don't want it to absorb the color that's underneath. So I tore a piece of paper off and what I'm going to do is put it over like this and I'm going to take my Kamara varnish spray and I'm going to spray over what I just, the uh, white dots that I just laid down so that I conceal it. So when I lay down my next layer of white, it doesn't absorb the color and the white looks more white. And it's just one light coat, very light. Alright, so I've sprayed both corners and now I'm going to use the heat gun to dry that. pretty good. Now I'm going to dip back into the snow cap and start adding more dots. And as you can see, it looks a little bit wider. It doesn't absorb the color underneath now. I think I need more ink. I'm also going to use my Posca pens on this center. You could just leave it at that and that looks pretty alone, but that just wouldn't be me.
Let's try that. So now I'm taking uh, my black Posca pen and oh, not that one. Right. I'm actually going to use these are by I'm not sure how to pronounce this Z E Y A R Z R paint markers. Um, I bought these on Amazon. The link will be in the description because I didn't start that black Posca pen. So I'm just going to draw a few dots here and there. my center so I want the lightest part of my flower to be up here so I'm just darkening this up a little bit then I'll bring some of the black up top as well And for me, the trick to making my centers the way I do is layering paint. I think the uh, ink or the paint, whatever it is you're using, because I believe that it gives it more texture, more depth. Let's try that. Now I have a dark brown. This is a Posca pen medium point and the color is dark brown and I'm just going to add a few dots here and there. So I'll do darker at the bottom and I'll bring some of the dark up but eventually I'll cover that up too with um, a lighter color but I'm trying to concentrate the darker colors in what would be the center of the center of the flower. <laughs> And it's really important to dry in between colors and layers because if you don't, the next color you put on will absorb the, uh, get the color that you just, the wet color that's on the paper, on the tip, and it could ruin your markers. So the next one I'm using is a Posca medium point. This is brown. It's just a little bit lighter. And now I'm concentrating this color more in the center here but I will put a few drops at the bottom, dots rather. Do the same on this side. And if you don't have Posca pens, you could probably do this with um, acrylic paint or just with the inks. You don't have to have Posca pens. So now I'm switching to the uh, Zayar pens. They're also um, paint pens. They're water-based. And I'm going to go with this color. 
Unfortunately, I don't see that it tells me the name of the color, but the kit that I bought will be in the description. And this is kind of, um, not sure what color this is. It's kind of like a mauve color. And I'm going to add a few dots of that with that now. And this, these are fine point. The Posca pens are medium point. These were not expensive at all. But I will say this, these these uh, paint pens don't work, I find, don't work as well as the Posca pens. I'm sure there's others out there that may work well as, as the Posca pens, but uh, these don't. They're okay to start with. That's why I bought them. They weren't that expensive, and I thought I'd give it a try. And I liked them, so I upgraded to the Posca pens. And again, they don't tell you what color they are. Sorry about that. But you can... You can use whatever colors you like. And I'm drawing, I'm putting some dots outside of the center. With this color. So I like the way that looks. So now I'm going to start going with the lighter colors. And this is kind of like a peach color. I forgot to mention, you should really shake these. Add a couple of these little dots outside of the center as well. And now I'm going to come back with the white again. Let me dry this. Now I'm using just the Posca pen. And, um, just light little dots. This pen seems to be leaking a little bit. So I'm trying to be very light with it. And while that's wet, I'm going to take my... Um, micro brush and dot over it
I know this is a lot of layering, but if you want those pretty centers, this is one way to get them. That should be dry. Now I'm going to take my gel pen and I'm going to start drawing short little lines outward. I try not to make a pattern, but it's not easy. Now, you may wonder why did I bother to spray the varnish when I'm adding so many layers of color. And it's a step that you can, that you don't have to do. It's just the way that I happen to do it, and I like the way it works for me. But you definitely can skip that step. You'll find your own way of doing it. I'm just trying to teach you the basics. So, there you have it. And I'll bring this up closer so that you can see corners. And that's it. So I guess I'll finish this one later. And this is the one that I did originally. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I try to get back to everyone as quickly as possible. And again, the link to all the products that I use to create this painting will be in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. You can also follow me on Facebook or Instagram at Vival Vintage Designs. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good evening. Bye.